Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 drum solos. The competent drum work of Don Brewer? For this list, we'll be ranking the most memorable drum solos of all time, but excluding extended live versions or short but memorable fills. These drum sequences and solos don't necessarily need to be unaccompanied to count, but they should drive home the performer's skill and technique in an obvious way that commands the listener's attention. What's your favorite drum solo? Tell us in the comments below. Number 10. In Agata de Vida, Iron Butterfly It's one of psychedelic rock's most legendary songs, and also among the longest. In in Agata de Vida by San Diego's own Iron Butterfly is a staggering 17 minutes and 5 seconds long. The track's epic length is thanks to a number of solo sections for each member of the band, with the guitars, bass, and drums each getting their turn in the spotlight. Former drummer Ron Bushy's part, the percussionist shines on both the solo drum section as well as a dual solo with organ player and singer Doug Ingle. Heck, even bassist Lee Dorman gets in on the act, soloing alongside Bushy during the final act of Inagata de Vida and its hazy proto metal dirge. Number 9. West Side Story Medley, Buddy Rich Bernard Buddy Rich is what you might call a drummer's drummer. The New York native has long been lauded as one of the finest drummers to ever pick up a pair of sticks, influencing countless musicians in the wake of his big band success. Case in point, Rich's incredible work recording the music of West Side Story, in particular the series of selections that make up the West Side Story medley. Buddy Rich's insane chops and flawless jazz technique are on full display here, as he leads his swinging band in some impressive and innovative musical directions. Simply stated, it's an incredible piece of music, and one which deserves serious investigation from anyone remotely interested in the art of percussion. Number 8. 46 and 2. Tool. They say that it isn't always about the destination, it's about the journey. This line of thinking could also apply to the musical approach of Danny Carey, as the Tool drummer has made a career out of perfecting the art of restraint and precision. This can be best heard on songs such as Ticks and Leeches and 46 and 2, the dark, brooding intensity of which has played a major role in defining Tool's progressive metal sound. Carey crafts percussive buildups with his hard hitting style, lurching alongside guitarist Adam Jones and bass player Justin Chancellor to create dreary symphonies of drum heavy bliss on the latter, which was released in 1998 as Enema's fourth single. Number 7. Painkiller, Judas Priest. Subtlety, no thanks. The heavy metal legends in Judas Priest would rather hit you over the head with this pile-driving title track to their 1990 opus Painkiller. Drummer Scott Travis pummels listeners with an unaccompanied double bass intro, and never looks back, driving the song from first note to last with furious aggression. Judas Priest had always had something of a revolving door drum position within their ranks, and Painkiller was Travis's first album with the band. Travis still holds that position today as Priest's longest serving drummer, but Painkiller might be the man's best performance with the band, a tour de force track that serves as a highlight of Judas Priest's enviable career. It's the 
Number six, Wipeout, The Surfaris. What comes to mind when you think of the musical genre known as surf rock? Sandy beaches, bikinis, pounding drums? If you're a fan of The Surfaris, then it's most definitely the latter. This is proven especially true when examining the pioneering surf rock group's biggest hit, Wipeout. Largely an instrumental, other than the brief cackled intro, Wipeout rocks and rolls with tremolo-picked, reverb-drenched guitar and the frenetic drumming of Ron Wilson. Wilson in particular gets to bust out on his own, alternating energetic drum solos against the riffing and solos of guitarists Jim Fuller and Bob Berryhill. It's a driving, infectious little number that has transcended genre to become one of the world's most instantly recognizable songs. Number five, the end, the Beatles. Not every drummer necessarily enjoys standing in the spotlight to perform a flashy, self-serving drum solo. Beatles legend Ringo Starr was a famously understated performer, but he nevertheless performed one to kick off the end. The final track on what would be the iconic rock and roll band's second to last studio album. Setting aside the hidden track, Her Majesty, The End appropriately closed out Abbey Road. Starr actually re-recorded the simple yet effective solo alongside guitar and tambourine while in studio. However, these instruments would be lowered in the mix prior to the album's release, allowing Starr's hard-hitting tom work to shine through on this fan-favorite Beatles cut. Number four, Rat Salad, Black Sabbath. The founding four members of Black Sabbath are all monumental musicians in their own right, but drummer Bill Ward arguably flies under the radar as the most underrated performing with the group. Ward's impressive and impactful talents as a drummer were always put to good use by the band, but perhaps don't receive the attention they deserve. Case in point, Rat Salad, the sometimes forgotten instrumental tucked away on side two of Sabbath's 1970 album Paranoid. At barely two and a half minutes, the track nevertheless manages to leave a mark, thanks to the heavy interplay between Ward's octopus-esque kid abuse and guitarist Tony Iommi's beefed up blues menace. We'll have the rat salad, please. Number three, won't get fooled again, The Who. During his time with The Who, Keith Moon paired self-destructive behavior with serious drumming skills. My Generation is a great showcase of his chops, but for this pick, we had to go with the epic Won't Get Fooled Again. Not only does this track from The Who's fifth album, Who's Next, feature one of classic rock's all-time best screams from singer Roger Daltrey, but also boasts an incredible solo section from Moon near the track's back end. Keith begins to ramp up his playing around the six minute mark before coming round near the song's finale for one final rush to the finish line. It's pure musical magic. Number two, YYZ, Rush. It's been a fan favorite instrumental for Rush fans ever since the track was first released back in 1981. YYZ is the title, and it's been somewhat of a musical calling card for these members of Canadian rock royalty, thanks largely in part to the unbelievable percussive skills of one Neil Peart. Although live renditions of YYZ may feature more pronounced, unaccompanied drum solos from Peart, the track itself is a tour de force of virtuoso musicianship, from any drummer's perspective. Not
not to mention exceptional work from guitarist Alex Lifeson and bassist Getty Lee. YYZ hits hard and hits often, reminding us that there are few acts out there that can do progressive rock quite like Rush. Before we hit you with our number one drum solo, here are a few heavy honorable mentions. Radar Love, Golden Earring. Frankenstein, Edgar Winter Group. Toad, Cream. TNUC, Grand Funk Railroad. Fire, The Jimi Hendrix Experience. Want more mojo? Sound Mojo brings you music from new and emerging artists in all genres from across the globe. From interviews to live shows and deep dives into music culture, Sound Mojo has you covered. Be sure to check out Sound Mojo to find your new favorite artists. Number 1. Moby Dick, Led Zeppelin Classic rock fans often debate which drummer is the all-time greatest. The conversation is ever-changing, but more often than not, Led Zeppelin's John Bonham sits atop these lists as an untouchable giant of the instrument. It's not hard to imagine why either, at least when listening to this classic cut from the band's second LP. Moby Dick is the penultimate song on the album, but it makes a huge impression not only with Bonham's punishing of his drum kit, but also the badass riff Jimmy Page lays down to bring it all together. It's hard, it's aggressive, it's legendary. Moby Dick has it all as one of the best examples of the classic rock drum solo as art. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.